Hello, I'm Jessica Vasquez. And I'm Alfred Yang. Our top stories for today are the execution of Troy Davis, animal cruelty, pajama program, and how to have a successful school year. Despite the appeals from his lawyers and the support from organizations and prominent figures, Davis's execution has been postponed three times, but is still on death row for nearly two decades. Let's take a look at the rally in Times Square and listen to what some of the speakers have to say about this issue. Justice for! They're not going to hear that in Georgia all the way in the back. Justice for! Justice for! In Amsterdam, in Atlanta, in Berlin, and Brussels, in San Francisco, and Savannah, hundreds of thousands of people are coming together today, right now, to demand justice for Troy Davis. This is not just another execution. This case shows them more than almost any other why the death penalty is so wrong, why the death penalty is a human rights violation. Unfortunately, after years of appeals, on August 20th, 2011, the Georgia State Board of Pardons and Parole denied Davis's last clemency pleas from his lawyers. Troy Davis was executed by lethal injection on Wednesday, September 21st, 2011, at 11.08 p.m. With everything that's happening in these shelters, uh, what do you, how do you feel about that? Well, I haven't heard that much about it, but the little bit that I have heard, I am very dismayed about it. You know, it's very upsetting that people would treat any animal not only a dog, as I am a dog lover, but any type of animal or pet in any sort of cruelty way. You know, I feel that if you love a pet as you would a human, you should take care of it. You know, you have, we have that responsibility. I was in Jamaica, Queens, and um, this family had moved to Florida, and they left this dog in the house. You know what I mean? So and the dog was pretty malnourished. And, they really, the dog was dying. So I took the dog home and raised the dog on my own. So it was a pit bull, but people think that pit bulls are very aggressive animals. You know what I mean? It's not how you raise a pit bull. You know what I mean? If you raise a pit bull not to fight or to love the children, the pit bull is going to love the kids. You know what I mean? Like the pit bulls I had, you know what I'm saying? Was, anybody could bring their kid around my dog and the dog would just, just basically dislike them. You know what I mean? No aggression, no nothing. You know what I mean? So people get pit bulls are very mean name about them dogs. Hi, I'm Jarrell Bannister from QPTV. And I'm Lucia Dragos from QPTV. And we're here outside of Pajama Program, a non-for-profit organization that donates pajamas and books to children in need. We're here to meet Genevieve Peturo, who is the founder of the organization. Let's go and have a look. Well, the idea was something that um, came from something that happened to me 10 years ago. I was working in marketing and television in New York City and had a real job and wanted to volunteer at night after work. And one night before I left, I looked back to see where the children were going to go to sleep that night. And I was heartbroken to see that they didn't have any pajamas to change into. They didn't have a book to read. They didn't have a bed. They were just on futons and as comfortable as staff in various shelters could make right. them, which was, was wonderful, but nothing like a child should have at bedtime. So I asked if I could bring some pajamas the next week, and they said, sure, that would be lovely. And I was giving the children one by one a pair of pajamas. And when I got to one little girl, she just stood next to me, and she wouldn't take the pajamas that I was trying to give her. And she just stood there and stared at me, and I said, wouldn't you like your pajamas? Uh -huh. And she said, what are they? She had no idea that there are clothes you change into, that you sleep in pajamas, different from what you sleep, what you would sleep right. in, what you wear during the day. And I was shocked. And I said, they're pajamas, and you wear them to sleep at night. What do you usually wear to bed at night? And she tugged on her pants, and she said, my pants. Mm, wow. And that broke my heart. And now... We have 70 plus chapters in 40 plus states, and everybody wants to help, which is great. I was delivering with our Chicago chapter president to one receiving organization in particular. We gave her some pretty pajamas, and she ran away, and then she came back, and she gave me a big hug, and she whispered in my ear, please don't forget me. Wow. Oh, I'm telling you, I thought 
how many people in this little girl's life probably forgot about her mm -hmm. and she she knew that you know she really was close to them and then they disappeared and she probably felt like they forgot about her my name is Nelson John I'm reporting from Guardia Community College school can be difficult and stressful but luckily students have found innovative ways on how to combat this today we'll be interviewing students on how they find their ways to combat this situation I usually study every other day, but when it's core classes like math, you have to study every day. At least I study one hour after I have this class. The thing I could recommend students out there is to, when you do your homework or you're studying, turn off the TV, turn off everything, your phone, the computer, everything, because that's so distracting. It really is. You cannot, you cannot just write a sentence and, you know, and see what's on TV because it's distracting. You're going to end up not doing it. So that's my best to how do you manage your budget? Do you have any suggestions or cost-efficient tips to manage your money? Definitely buy, if you drive to school, try to get a yearly or monthly um, parking ticket at the parking lot because it's really hard to find a parking space around here and also bring lunch from, from home. If you're a high school student, don't be afraid to be prepared for the future. If you're looking into any kind of college or trade school after graduation, don't be afraid to look into it from now. Go on college tours, visit the college websites, as well as websites such as www.fastweb.com that give you information about scholarships and advice about college preparation. Also, don't forget to fill out your FAFSA for financial aid. For students that are already in college, don't be afraid to explore all the different organizations, extracurricular activities, clubs, and venues that you have on your campus. This is here for you to utilize so you can explore your passion, your interest, and your drives and further get your foot into the door. Don't forget to network. College is a growing ground for networking. There are, other, and there are so many peers and so many students that are in the fields that you might want to get into or trying to do the things that you might have interest in. You need to learn from them, your peers, and your administration, and get your chance to know them and work with them. Because at the end of the day, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. So don't forget to network. These are my tips and my advice on how to have a successful school year and future ones to come. For more information, don't forget to visit www.qptv.org. Thanks again for tuning in.